the voice of Kenya Nairobi. Time now is 12 minutes past 6. You are hereby informed that everybody is requested to stay at home. There should be no movement in town. The government has now been taken over by the military until further notice. There should be no movement of persons or vehicles from one place to another. The police should now assume their role of civilian until further notice. So basically, that is the voice that the whole country woke up to that very morning on August 1st of 1982. This is the day that the military attempted a coup. In Nairobi, which is Kenya's capital, people woke up to the sounds of gunfire, combat jets, and explosions. Imagine you are sleeping and what wakes you up is a sound of a gunfire. This is the very morning that the Kenya People's Redemption Council. This is now the council that was being led by Hezekiah Ochuka. They were live on air after storming into the Voice of Kenya Studios. The Voice of Kenya Studios, that was the name then. Currently, it is known as KBC. So allow me to briefly take you through the events that preceded before this day and actually what transpired during and after the event, which left over 100 soldiers and about 200 civilians dead. A warning. The government has been taken by a very, very, very powerful group supported by the people. Wanainchi wenyewe na wanajesi wote. Kwa hivyo, wherever you are, cooperate or you blame yourself. Thank you. Voice of Kenya. Now in March 1982, there's this group of airmen at the Kenya Air Force based in Nanyuki who in their own view saw the government of the day, which was then led by the late President Moi, not meeting the expectations. Of course, they had their own reasons best known to them. You know, every time you want to do something, you must have a reason. So the, must, the masterminds in this case were Lieutenant Leslie Kombo Mamburi and Senior Sergeant Pancras Oteo Okumu. Fellow Kenyans, over the past few years, this country has been shedding from an open to a closed dictatorial and inhuman society. The fundamental principles for which many of our people sacrificed their lives during the heroic struggle for independence have been compromised in the interest of a few greedy and responsible bandits. Over the past six months, we have witnessed with the disgust the imposition of a de, a de jure one-party system without the people's consent, arbitrary arrest and the detention of innocent citizens, censorship of the press, intimidation of individuals, and general violation of fundamental human rights. So one day, Senior Sergeant Pankras Okumu pays a visit to Senior Private Hezekiah Ochuka at his office in, in Nairobi. Ochuka was then based in Nairobi, so uh, this guy pays a visit to him, and on arrival, one thing catches his eyes. This is something very unique. There was a writing on Ochuka's desk with the details, and allow me quote, the next president of Kenya. So Oteo seeing these words, he immediately knew that Ochuka would be the man to implement the idea he had in mind. So they shared thoughts on the idea in place, and so they set in, a mo in motion a plan that would see them succeed in removing from power the then sitting president. So remember, Oteo and Kombo, actually, back in Nanyuki, they had an idea of leading the country. But then they had not yet implemented it or were still in process of trying to make sure it is something that happens. So coming to visit Hezekiah, he sees this thing on the table and he's like, wow, this is the right man for the job. 
So by May 1982, actually I said that was March. So by May 1982, now that they've set things in motion and things are moving, by May 1982, the intelligence community had already received reports about the coup that was being planned. And the reports were clear to them that it was being planned by some Kenya Air Force personnel. By the way, Ochuk and his team also knew that the intelligence community had the reports about their plans. And it's even more interesting, by the way, to know that he also had the intelligence from the very community. So what mattered here is who would outsmart the other. So late July 1982, senior private Hezekiah Ochuka very determined to make this deal accomplished. He holds a secret meeting in Umoja Estate in Nairobi. And the purpose of that meeting was to discuss how the coup was going to be executed. It is alleged that in order to convince those he recruited for the coup mission, Ochuka came up with very interesting stories. So he told the attendees of the meeting that he had the support of Russia who would send a Soviet ship to Kenyan coast to help curb any external interference. And it is also reported that during this meeting, he also told the attendees that, by the way, I have the support of Tanzania, Sudan, and Uganda who would all send their troops to the Kenyan borders to counter any form of opposition. People would easily be convinced. So the plan was then to gain support from all the Kenyan military arms, wait for the president to leave the country on official duty, and then take over power. Just a minute. Actually, this is a point now. Yeah? Uh, we have Ochuka and his team. They have discussed several interesting points here. He has promised the team that we have support of Russia, we have the support of Sudan, Uganda and Tanzania, and so people have been convinced. But now there is a big work that is yet to be done. Because remember, Ochuka, uh, Oteo, and Kombo were Air Force men. So it means a number of those who they've already managed to convince, the big number is from the Air Force. So the big work here is now to convince other men also from uh, the other uh, parts of the military. That is now land, uh, the Kenya army, and also navy. Very interesting. So a meeting, by the way, because they are waiting for the president to go out on an official duty. And so there was this meeting dubbed Organization of African Unity, which was scheduled to take place in Libya. Uh, that was going to happen on 3rd of August, that very 1982. And uh, the then president, Daniel Arap Moi, was among the head of states to be in attendance. Therefore, the coup was planned for that very 3rd of August, when President Moi would be away. So Friday 30th July, a senior intelligence officer by the name Kibati leads a team of officers to Nanyuki, where they were to arrest the coup plotters. Because, and, you know, information about their mission had been communicated to the generals in charge of Nanyuki barracks by their seniors. Like, what I mean is, eh, there is a point now, Kibati and his team are headed to Nanyuki. Their main aim, because they have the intelligence that there's this team plotting to overthrow the government. So, before they go to Nanyuki, because they are going there to, 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 to actually arrest those who are plotting to uh, overthrow the government. So on their way to Nanyuki, they are quite sure that a message concerning their mission to Nanyuki has been communicated by their seniors to the generals who are manning uh, the Nanyuki barracks. So when they reached Nanyuki, their earlier plans didn't bore any fruits. Let me take you back just a little bit before I come there. I want you to know that during the Umoja meeting, the team plotting to overthrow the government had est established that there were tra traitors among them. And so fears emerged that their seniors within the Air Force might have gotten reports about their plans. So they agreed to keep those they suspected to be traitors away during any discussions thereafter. And a list of those who would possibly support the course was also agreed on. So Ochuk and his team had a recruitment drive for those who would support their cause. 
and those they managed to convince and bought the idea actually underwent an oath of secrecy and commitment just to ensure everything they were doing was a secret plan and everything was to remain just with them. So Ochuka and his team learned of the plans. The team led by Kibati had to arrest them. So they therefore changed. They knew very well that Kibati and the, the team were planning to arrest them. So they changed the date of the coup, moving it from 3rd of August to 1st of August. That is now like two days earlier so that they could have, they could ambush these people. Of course, Kibati and the team knew they were, the coup was to happen on third. So they were planning an arrest before third. These people also having intelligence because I've told you very well that uh, this team, of course, Kibati and the intelligence community had the information of everything they were planning to do. The very same way, they also had the information about Kibati and the intelligence community and they knew everything that was being planned. So they then moved this thing from third to first to ensure they also kind of counter the plans that these people had. So back to where I left you. I believe I left you at a point where by now Kibati and his team had reached uh, Nanyuki and uh, like their plans did not bore any fruits. I know you're asking yourself how. So when Kibati and his team arrived at Nanyuki, this was around 10 a.m., July 30th. They met somebody by the name Lieutenant Colonel Peter Kagume, who after getting their brief expressed ignorance of any planned coup. You know, <laughs> you get this banner at the gate, you explain now our mission, my name is so-and-so, uh, this is my team, our mission here is to do this, yeah, we are, we are here to arrest this group who are trying to plot this. And then as a senior guy in this barracks, he tells you, like he's kind of so ignorant about uh, any plans of any coup being plotted, yeah? So he told them actually to come back later after he had consulted. He wanted to consult. So they left and came back at midday. The colonel told them to just go back to where they... When, when they came back, yeah? I want you to get me clear. When they came back, this is now at midday. Remember they were told to go uh, back and then came back later once he had consulted. So they went away and came back at midday. So when they came back at midday, the colonel told them to just go back to where they came from since those in question were their boys and that they would handle them. So Kibati and his team had no choice but to just about their mission and leave for Nairobi. This is 30th. So at 3 a.m. on August 1st, 1982, the attempted coup got underway with the takeover of Isili Airbase. And by 4 a.m., the nearby Embakasi Airbase had also fallen. So at 6 a.m., Senior Private Hezekiah Ochuka, Sergeant Pancras Oteo Okumu, and their team had captured the then voice of Kenya radio station, from where they then broadcast in English and Swahili, that the military had overthrown the government. And uh, by the way, Leonard Mambo Motela, a veteran broadcaster, remembers very well the experience he had on that day. Actually, if you look for Jacqueline Ludibui on YouTube, you'll get the whole story how, like, the experience, um, uh, the experience uh, uh, Leonard Mambo Motela had on that day. They went for him. Uh, very early in the morning, of course, they had caught up with one of the then KBC drivers by the name of Wainaina, who by, od uh, by order took them to where Mambo Motela was living in Ngara. So Mambo Motela was forced to live with them, only having three minutes to prepare before their departure. Yeah? So he remembers so well how they reached the studios, and Ochuka wrote a note on paper and gave him to read it on air. The content of the note was very clear. The government of President Moi had been overthrown by the military and Ochuka was the then new president. All the police officers were now civilians and all prisoners were to be let free and the public were to remain in their homes and await further directions that were to follow later from the military. Akaja wile uchuka, sasa karatasi ya kadika, kadika pali mionenu, akani pamimi, kasa matangaza hiyo, 
kama bia ndio kasema msikilizaji wasikilizaji mimi ni Leonard Mambo Mbotela mtangazaji wenu wa hapa sauti ya Kenya hapa ni naye bwana Uchuka ambaye ndiye sasa rais mpya wa Jamhuri ya Kenya wamepindua serikali ya rais Daniel Arap Moi polisi wote ni raia mahabusu wafunguliwe na wananchi tulieni nyumbani mpaka mtakapotangaziwa baadaye serikali ya Moi imepinduliwa so lieutenant general Lazarus Sumbeivo through the help of other officers managed to evacuate president Moi from his Kabarak's home in Nakuru to an unknown location they had earlier planned to take president Moi to a place identified a small farm but this later changed since uh, they had decided to look for a more secure location remember this is happening when now these people have taken control of the voice of Kenya they've given a statement and now the whole country is a bit of shaken by 10 a.m. the government counterattack was underway and Ochuka and Uteyo went back to Isili from where they flee to the neighboring Tanzania by the way they had identified the plane they wanted to use but then the cupboards containing the pilots headsets and the keys to the buffalo plane they wanted to use were locked so they had to br- to break them with gun butts before they could then escape it is not clear though i can't really tell whether the officers who flew with Chuka and Oteo out of the country were part of the rebellion or they had been forced at gunpoint to head for Tanzania major general mahmoud mohammed led the counter attack on the voice of kenya radio station by the time he was reaching the station he found mambo mbotela when he was still within the vicinity of the studios and so he ordered him to enter the studio and give another announcement the details of this announcement were also very clear president moi's government was still in- intact general mahmoud mohammed was there in studios with his team and that the public were to remain calm and stay at home awaiting further directions that were to be given by the government nikasema hivyo wananchi wananchi wasikizaji hamjambo tena ni mimi mimi tena nimerudi tena ni mimi mimi tena kuambia ya kwamba serikali ya Daniel Arap Moi bado inaendelea niko naye hapa general Mahmoud Mohamed ambaye amekuja na wanajeshi wake serikali ya Moi inaendelea tulieni wananchi tulieni majumbani tulieni majumbani mpaka mtakapoambiwa baadaye so once the order had been restored that day president moi addressed the nation through the waves of the then voice of kenya assuring the country that all was well nataka niseme kwamba yale yaliyo tokea leo asubuhi kwa muda mfupi ilioletea wananchi wasiwazi mwingi sasa imeangamizwa na jeshi letu la nchi kafu na polisi na nawashukuru wao sana kwa juhudi zao za kuangamiza hao maharamia ambao waliweka wananchi katika hali ya wasiwasi nataka niseme kwamba mambo kama haya ambayo yalitukia ni watu au wana jeshi wa laangani ambao walijichukulia madaraka ya kuharibu yale yote tunayotaka kufanya na kwa hivyo tulieni mahali popote muliko so a court process started on August 19th that same year and the court granted Ochuka and Oteyo asylum in Tanzania for a while In November 11th, 1983, Ochuka and Oteyo were brought back to the country and they together with other colleagues were charged with treason. They were tried and found guilty of leading and attempting coup, something 
that was punishable by death. So Hezekiah Ochuka and Pancras Oteyo Kumu were hanged at Kamiti Maximum Security Prison in July 1987. Ochuka's rank was the second lowest rank in the military then. The government went after those they suspected were the masterminds of the attempted ouster, including more senior figures whom President Moy referred to as big men. The government disbanded the Air Force, continued detention in Comunicado of most of its 2,100 members, confiscated eight passports belonging to prominent political figures, detained student leaders who supported the ouster. University of Nairobi remained closed for some time. The then police commissioner, Ben Gethi, and general service unit commander, Peter Ndogo Mbothia, were dismissed, and the then deputy army commander, Major General Mahmoud Mohammed, appointed the head of the new Air Force. After the failed coup that left over a hundred soldiers and about 200 civilians dead, including a number of non-Kenyan citizens, the organizers were arrested and tried by court martial at the army's Langata barracks. Lakini kutoka leo sa kumenambili mbaka sa moja kesho asubuhi kutakuwa kuna kafiu yaani hakuna mtu ambaye anatembea katika mji wa Nairobi kutoka sa kumenambili leo jioni mbaka sa sa moja kesho asubuhi pia kafiu pia itakuwemo e, na nyuki kwa saa hizo hizo saa 12 leo jioni mpaka saa moja kesho na itaendelea mpaka serikali tangaze nisikukani kafiu itako, itakomeshwa that marks the end of our today's brief walk through the Kenya's 1982 attempted coup I'm glad that we've been able to take you through how it started, what transpired before, during, and after the coup. My name is Kwachi.